thanks for tuning in to the Guardian Hub podcast. This is a podcast about destiny and our experiences in the game. We also spotlight different guests and communities, and we strive to be a place to talk about uplifting experiences that we have had. Sin, how are you doing tonight? I'm pretty magical, sir. How about you? I'm doing good. And by the way, I should introduce myself, but first of all, we have Sin as one of our hosts, and my name is Kingsley. And this is our first uh, episode of the podcast, so we just kind of wanted to introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about why we're going to have this podcast. But very glad to have you tonight, Sin. Uh, how's your week been in Destiny? Uh, super eventful, actually. <laughs> I've gotten more <laughs> game time this week than I have in quite some time. So super pumped, yeah. super close on a few things. I'm sure we'll get into here in a little bit. But I'm excited. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have this podcast going. And, you know, it's just kind of uh, the purpose of the podcast is just to have um, a place to talk about Destiny, of course. I know there's a lot of Destiny podcasts out there, but it's something I kind of wanted to start where we we focus more on just what we're doing in the game and our experiences. We don't really get around to the news unless it comes up naturally in conversation. And that's totally fine. And um, we want this to be a place, too, where we spotlight different guests, like I mentioned in the intro. and have different guests on and have different resources, like um, things that they've created, their podcasts. And we like to just talk about our experiences and ways where we have a good time in the game. Uh, but to kick it off, um, Sin, how did you first start getting into video gaming yourself? Wow. Um, years and years ago. Um, my first ever experience with video games was when my brother, my older brother, had an old Atari. I can't remember which Atari it was, but I remember playing Atari and then later on got into NES and playing Super Mario Brothers. And that really kicked out my gaming experience. Um, we had other, we had computers after that, like a Commodore 64 and had a old like Windows 3.1 setup. And I remember playing some like early version PC games on that. But that's it. That's how I got into gaming. I did take a while off. There was some time uh, years ago that I didn't really game as much. Uh, the gaming that I did was strictly on PC. It was just like Diablo 2 or later on Diablo 3. Never really got much into console gaming um, until I got my PlayStation uh, a couple of years back. And then Xbox about that time and started getting into Destiny. And then that's how I got back in again into the like full time gaming as my hobby. So you mentioned Xbox and I was going to ask how you got into Destiny. So that started on Xbox. Yeah, Destiny actually started on Xbox. I was uh, working uh, my job at the time, a uh, buddy that I knew very well. His name was Mike, actually. And um, <laughs> he was playing on Xbox and playing Destiny. He's like, dude, you got to try this game. It's like super awesome. And so we ended up buying an Xbox, ended up buying a Destiny. And then what ended up happening is like about six months or so later, he ended up selling his Xbox and going to PS4. And then everybody that I knew got talked into going to PS4. So I switched over to the PS4, got on that bandwagon and switched to Destiny 1 at the time uh, <laughs> with that bandwagon. And then um, it was closer to the end of the uh, final year of Destiny 1 with um oh shoot now the, the last uh the last the expansion rise of iron. the rise of iron yes that's when i started getting into it uh playing it a lot more going into it hardcore getting into the communities uh and about that time found uh destiny reset through another buddy i worked with and uh started meeting a lot of people that way oh that's yeah that's it's pretty cool and and i didn't start writing to destiny right away either i'll talk about that some in a second but um yeah i mean destiny that's why we're here that's what we're talking about stuff. Um, boy, how I started video gaming, I was pretty young myself. I had, I don't know that we had an Atari in the family, but I had friends that had an Atari, but we started with an old system called the ColecoVision. It was kind of like similar to like an Atari or in television and um, really old games like Donkey Kong and Pac-Man. And then where it really started though was the first NES. Um, that was kind of like my quote first console that my parents got me. <laughs> and uh, Man, played Super Mario Brothers and Zelda like crazy. Um, that was my thing. And um, then um, 
I had a Super NES, I think, but I kind of got into portable gaming even for back then, even though it was kind of new. I got a Game Boy and got a um, portable Turbo Graphics. It was called a Turbo Express and um, did some gaming there. But this was kind of the time where I was getting more in high school. And then I kind of got a gaming a little bit through that and through college. Um, you know, just everyone's busy and you don't have a lot of money and stuff like that. But then I forget where I got back into getting a console again, but I know I at least had a PlayStation 2. I'm trying to remember if I had a PlayStation 1 and just got back into console gaming again. I got a PlayStation 3 pretty much when it came out and a PlayStation 4 pretty much when it came out also. But I was always into games uh, more just like single player, whatever the games were for like, um, like Uncharted or just you play a game and then you're kind of done. And that's what a lot of the games were like anyways. But I'd heard about Destiny. I'd known about it. And I, I knew about Halo, even though I never played Halo. Um, funny enough, my wife had even played Halo some in her family. But um, for whatever reason, I, I typically wasn't going to get in a game like Destiny or Halo games that had like shooting PvP type situations like that. I didn't really know that they had cool um, campaigns also. Well, finally, one Christmas, it was the Christmas after Taken King. Um my wife bought destiny for me as a Christmas present. She's like, yeah, I heard it's pretty cool. You know, people say it's good and it was a good price and they have all the expansions out and taking King I'm like, okay, cool. I'll pop it in some point. And I didn't even pop it in until at least like the February after Christmas, just cause I was finishing some other games. And then I pop it in and I'm like, Whoa, what is this game? This is crazy. This is fun. This is like totally my style. Um, and I just started playing it and, uh, really got into it and I got as far as I could on my own. And I realized that this game, you kind of had to play with other people if you wanted to do certain things. Like I was pretty able to get through most of the campaign on my own, but there was a couple times where it was a little hard and I tried to just randomly hit up someone in the tower <laughs> without even having a microphone. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just a new, right. I hadn't done any, you know, cooperative gaming with anyone before other than maybe just like playing like, you know, 007 in the same living room with someone, but you know, n- never anything online. And you know, that someone helped me with a quest once that was hard, but then I, I, you know, I, I listen to podcasts. So I did a search and I found destiny reset podcast also and joined that. And then finally started finding some people to group up with and doing some raids. And uh, that's where it really took off and joy doing raids and meeting people. And pretty sure that's how we met was just through just mutual people doing raids and, and we started writing a lot together ourselves. Yeah. If that sounds right. Yeah. Now you mentioned some old consoles. You said the Glecovision? Co- ColecoVision, like C O L E C O. Gotcha. Do you remember the Sega Saturn? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was one console I did have when I was younger. You said that, and I was like, man, some quirky console names. I was like, what did I have that was, and it was like, oh, yeah, it was the Sega Saturn. And I remember the one main game that I used to play on it was uh, Virtua Fighter. <laughs> yeah man there was there was fun games it, you ever play street fighter also was that on nintendo or never got big into street yeah. fighter i did play some uh zelda on nes and then uh, link to the past i think it was on snes i played that so i did get a little bit into the zelda games and I was never big into the uh fighting games until really like first person shooter style games until destiny came around. It was always RPG style or story style games. Yeah. And, and Diablo, I forgot to mention that was one that I did to do a little bit of PC gaming and Diablo was one that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. I've played Diablo one, two and three all the way through, although I haven't kept up with Diablo three because I know that they continue to add stuff to it and I need to get back into it some more because it's always a fun game. But as we know, we have, too much too little time on our hands these days with gaming there's this is a golden age of gaming there's there's more to do than ever before and in destiny it's been staying an active game i mean destiny one came out and it was solid for three years and then destiny two came out we're in the second year there and um boy there's a lot to do um sin how do we feel or how do you feel about the state of destiny right now how are you enjoying it in general I'm actually really enjoying it. I've got a stack of games that I haven't really played. Um, talked about this once before, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn, Tomb Raider, Monster Hunter, Assassin's Creed, God mm-hmm. of War. Played two of them a little bit, but every time I go to play, I go back to Destiny. Right now I'm chasing Osprey for a title. Right now I'm chasing Infamy Resets for a title. Um, started working on some 
you know, the new releases like Oxygen uh, that they're doing account wide where you have to get orbs, strikes, uh, just like you were. We're chasing down these new weapons or chasing down these titles or chasing down these triumphs. There's always something going on. There's always something to do. And you sprinkle in some rating into that or sprinkle in some gambit or crucible. There's just not enough time in the day to be able to do it all. So you end up spreading it out over the nights. I'm, I love it. And I keep coming Mm -hmm. back to it and I, I don't think I'll ever step away from it. Me too. Me too. I've, I've seen for myself, I've, been able to enjoy the game somewhat, even in its lulls that we have. And I feel like some people would say there's some minor lulls that we have right now. I don't totally agree, um, but I I understand their point. But I feel like the game is in a great, great state. And ever since the Forsaken release, which was amazing, I mean, yeah, we all had some complaints about year one of Destiny 2, but uh, year two has been pretty good and hasn't been for everyone. Some people have felt like there's too much grind or power level requirements is kind of a pain. And, you know, I really do feel like this is a benefit to me and I'm sure to you, but like, I feel like the game has almost moved more towards PVE and they're putting less focus in PVP. And I hear those complaints from the people that love to play crucible and the state of the sandbox and the state of the game and trials isn't there, but I can't complain. I feel like there's a lot to do in the game for myself. So I I don't know what the answer is to keep everyone happy, but that being said, it's the game is in a great state for me and, and there's tons to do. I'm working on oxygen also. I'm working on um, leveling up. As we start this podcast, we are in uh, the season of the Drifter. On the surface, there's not too much. You know, there's just the new Gambit Prime and there's the Reckoning. But yet there's different armor pieces we can grind out for to build, to have different builds for Gambit, which... Yeah, it's not my favorite activity, but I like it enough. And there's reckoning to do. There's still the raids to do. I always love coming back to raiding. And we'll have, um, I'm sure, many guests on in the future that kind of um, mirror that with with me and you as we talk about our experiences. But yeah, for now, we have a lot to talk about and, and a lot to do. Now, did you mention, Sin, you're working on, uh, yeah, your Osprey. You're, you're very close to getting your Wayfarer title. Is that correct? Yeah, one away from Wayfarer. And one one piece away from Dredgen. So I'm super, super close. A couple away from Cursebreaker, too. Like, I'm on the cusp of getting a title somewhere in Destiny. I just haven't quite gotten it. I think Osprey is going to be my best bet to, to finally get one. Yeah. I know you already got one title. Are you close to... You got Wayfair. So are you close to your second or possibly even a third one? I probably am. I haven't been hitting it as hard for any other titles. I think I could get Dredgen fairly easily. Uh, I'm sure I still have some um, kills in those supers to get. Um, And I think I have one item that I might be chasing, but I bet I could get that fairly easily. I might actually want to try for the newest one a little bit harder than even Dredgen. Uh, What is the, oh boy, what is the newest one called? I should have that information in front of me. Not the blacksmith one, but you know, the newest one in this season of the Drifter. The the thing about it when I was looking through the requirements, though, is you have to get multiple different emblems and sets of armor for the different build outs. So even if I want to just mostly be a sentry, uh, I have to get all the loadouts to get this title, which makes sense. So maybe I'll, I'll work on that eventually. And then I can. Have yeah, it's title. everything with the new Joker's Wild Triumph. So the seal is called Reckoner. Reckoner. And that'll right, be the yeah. title for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just looked it up. I cheated. Oh, that's great. We need to have our live uh, look up while we're in here. <laughs> yeah, and raiding, raiding the game is as good as ever. Um, sometimes I look back at the raids in D1 and think I like them a little bit better. And I still think there are some really cool things in there that I wish we had in the new raids. But the thing that I like about raiding is a positive experience where people can come together. I've had many people act as Sherpas towards me to help teach me the raid. And I like helping people through their first time of raiding. To me, doing a raid over and over usually doesn't get boring. Um, it can if maybe if you're running it with the exact same group every single time and it becomes super easy. And if there's no goals towards getting a piece of equipment or leveling up. But most of the time, there's someone new that wants to raid or you're chasing a power grind or there's some weapon that you don't have yet. So I continue to enjoy to raid. Yeah, it's it's super it's fun. It's interesting. You do it with a different group of people each time and something new definitely pops up. 
uh, there's a lot of groups out there that run them. They have the same five or six people that typically run them over and over, and they have this rhythm and routine, and they can knock them out pretty quick. But you need it for a power grind. The newer age, you need it for adding power to your to your character, to your titan, your hunter, your warlock. Um, plus, they're fun to do. They're challenging. There's mechanics in them that's that keeps you coming back for more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true. So um, with that, let's uh, stop boring people on on our history, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, continuing this show and having topics that we bring up. Uh, we will talk about news as it comes up, of course. Um, we have some coming up soon where we want to talk about the state of the infusion economy in the game and some other things, and uh, we'll bring that to you soon. If you're listening to this, uh, feel free and uh, let us know what you want to hear about. If you know any content creators or podcasters yourself or have something that you want to show off, feel free and hit us up and we might like to have you on the podcast. With that, we will give you our contact info as we, as this one comes to a close. So unless you anything else you wanted to add on this episode, Sin? Um, I, you know, I think for me, the the biggest thing, you know, just kind of add this in here. We we listen to a lot of podcasts ourselves, and, and one thing that I found a lot is there's some of the podcasts we've listened to kind of stray away from Destiny. I think our more focus is going to be more on the Destiny community, more so on our gaming experiences, like you said, a place where guardians, just like ourselves, can come and hang out and experience the same things we do. Yes, I agree. That is, I'm so glad you brought that up. I mean, that is a point and a purpose of this. And we are not afraid to have people on the show that have different opinions on Destiny, but we are so uh, up on Destiny ourselves and like talking about it that we wanted to have a podcast where we can continue to do so. And um, not that we won't ever talk about other games, but um, we really feel like having this community where we can talk about Destiny and spotlight other people will be a great resource. So we yeah, will have some great people coming up, as I am sure we will. And um, Glad to have you with us on board here, Sin. And um, if that is it, then can you tell us where they can find you, Sin, your contact info? They can find me on the interwebs at twitch.tv slash Sin Media and on Twitter at Sin underscore media. And those are the two main places. If you want to find me, find me there. And for those unaware, Sin is spelled C-Y-N. It depends on the day yeah, and how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, and I introduced myself as Kingsley. My gamer tag is actually Kingsley Mac. And people can find me there as Kingsley Mac. Also on Twitch, I stream occasionally, mostly when I'm raiding. On Twitter, my, gamer, my tag is actually MC Kingsley. Look to changing that if I can. And our show, again, is called The Guardian Hub Podcast. We have a website theguardianhub.com where you can find us. You can also um, search on iTunes and other platforms, which we'll have the podcast up on. And we will have a Twitter and other channels. You can find us at the guardian hub pretty much everywhere you look. So we look forward to putting out more information there and going forward as we go. So until next time, thank you for joining me tonight, Sin. It was a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. And we will talk to you later, Guardians. Good night. We'll see you next time.